Welcome back to What Matters This Week. Uh, Mike Coey here, and joining us for this week's interview segment is Vermont Attorney General T.J. Donovan. T.J., it's a great pleasure to have you here. Thanks for stepping on in today. Thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. Now, the first thing I know we'd like to go over with you being that uh, you were also the state's, the state's attorney excuse me, at the time of the Stephen Burgoyne a wrong way crash uh, about two and a half years or so ago now. And as uh, anyone paying attention to uh, the news media the last couple of weeks would certainly know, his trial recently took place with uh, convictions on all five counts of second degree murder that he was facing. Uh, what was your uh, thought about them when you first heard that that was the finding of the jury? Well, I was relieved that there was a guilty verdict by the jury on all five counts, uh, just a senseless uh, act, uh, trage tragedy, uh, five young people who lost their lives, and a great job by State's Attorney Sarah George and Deputy Prosecutor Susan Harden, and I'm just uh, very happy for the family uh, and the loved ones of, of the five young people who lost their lives. Indeed, and uh, given that you had a state's attorney role uh, at the time of that crash, what assistance, if any, you were able to uh, provide to the investigation here? What uh, well, I was role the, did yeah, you I was the state's attorney at the time um, uh, that the murder, the murders happened. Uh, we arraigned Mr. Borgain Borg and, and started the the investigation, um, but you know Sarah took over um, and she did a great job, and so really a, a, a testament to her hard work and her skills as a trial attorney to uh, present the evidence and you know the jury uh, made the right decision in my opinion. And not that much of a learning curve involved uh, once you transitioned into the statewide office you hold now then? Well look we I worked with Sarah for a number of years um, uh, in the state's attorney's office. She's a great attorney. She's a great state's attorney. Um, the attorney general's office is, is a little bit different. You have a larger Indeed. you have a larger portfolio. Uh, the jurisdiction is, is more expansive. And so uh, they're both great jobs, but you know, getting back to the work prosecutors do, you know, it's those types of trials that are are, are so tragic, but so important uh, to stand up for um, uh, five young people who lost their lives tragically to make sure that justice is being done. Um, uh, that's important work, and uh, just grateful that um, the jury made the right decision. Indeed. Uh, let's uh, actually uh, turn now, uh, Mr. Donovan, if we might, to a different sort of a criminal matter that uh, all of us just learned about uh, by now just over a week ago, that being uh, Operation Bada Bing. Uh, the uh, statements that uh, not only you and also the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, put out about uh, these defendants <coughs> and the uh, alleged acts of which they're accused, if, if I remember correctly, involving child pornography, uh, it was certainly very strong and uh, yeah, extremely direct. So for anyone that might not be familiar with this matter already, trying to uh, give people some understanding of what sorts sure. of allegations sure. we might be dealing with here. Well, it was a uh, joint effort by the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, the federal government, and my office to crack down on child pornography, not just the possession, but the promotion of child pornography. Um, and I think the important thing uh, to note is this is, um, the, 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 these, these are not just photos or, or images, these are crime scenes, uh, oftentimes of uh, depicting sexual violence um, against infants, against toddlers, against babies, uh, very horrific, horrific acts. Um, and uh, it's criminal. And it, it is oftentimes uh, real victims, it is real vi victims, sometimes in Vermont, sometimes not in Vermont. Uh, but to traffic in this type of uh, this images is to perpetuate uh, crime against children. Um, and so it was a great effort, not only by the U.S. Attorney's Office, Christina Nolan, uh, but my team, particularly the ICAC team, which is the Internet Crime Against Children Task Force, which is housed in my office. And they really are the un unsung heroes of, of this effort. They work extremely hard doing extremely difficult work. These images are disturbing. And so uh, we brought eight uh, charges against eight separate defendants. Four went federally, four will be prosecuted by my office. And this is incredibly important work because this is about protecting children, innocent children who are the most vulnerable uh, in our community. And we need to do more of it, uh, but we gotta support uh, the brave men and women of law enforcement who do this work. 
the highest priority when you're talking about uh, victims and potential victims yep. that don't have the ability uh, to speak up for themselves. Absolutely, and I, I just would underscore that um, these these images are um, it depicts violence, sexual violence um, against infants, against toddlers, against babies. Uh, this is horrific, horrific imagery, and we have to do more to combat this. Not only in the state of Vermont, not only in our country, globally. Uh, this is a global issue. Indeed. Uh, let's uh, actually turn our attention now to uh, combating crime in, in a different manner, that being uh, through the support that I believe you've spoken of publicly uh, in the past about Vermont State Police uh, being <coughs> equipped uh, with body cameras. Uh, do you believe uh, troopers having them as part of uh, their standard field equipment uh, might help your job and your cohorts, yeah. uh, or might it uh, make it a bit more complex? Well, the Vermont State Police do a great job uh, protecting and serving our public. Uh, they are the preeminent law enforcement agency in the state of Vermont. And I know the Vermont State Police want body cameras, and I fully support uh, the police wearing body cameras. It really is the best practice in 21st, 21st century policing because it's good for the citizen and it's good for the officer. It's a true record of what actually happened. And so you have transparency and you have accountability and from as a prosecutor it gives the best evidence to what occurred so we got to make sure that we can have the funding for to buy the equipment and also the funding frankly to retain yeah. uh, the retention uh, of, of the data because of course it's digital data um, and that's a big part of it because of course it's evidence and so I fully support it I think it goes a tremendous way in terms of promoting the public trust in law enforcement, which is so critical, so I think it's money well spent. Yeah, and uh, definitely uh, money that needs to be spent because, as you just mentioned, Mr. Donovan, yes, server space to store digital video certainly not cheap. It's got you would be know that, that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you and that's that. This is you know. So when we talk about these issues, we also have to talk about uh, the budget yeah. and what do we value? Well, of course we value uh, public safety. Of course we value public trust in law enforcement and public trust in government we got to be willing to spend the money to make the investment in order to promote the public trust, in order to promote our public safety. The Vermont State Police do a great job for the people of Vermont. I'm proud to partner with them, and I'm proud to support them in their efforts to obtain body cameras. Indeed, and uh, another public safety issue that a lot of Vermonters are already aware the, about what you've been outspoken, the, particularly in recent months, uh, being opioids. Now, well, what sort of uh, attention are you paying to the uh, opioid trial that's still yeah. ongoing sure. in the state of Oklahoma at the moment, especially given that you've recently filed uh, another yep. uh, lawsuit against a pharmaceutical company because of opioid production? Sure. So the opiate crisis, as many Vermonters know, is I think the number one issue affecting our state. We've lost far too many people as a result of overdose deaths. Too many people's lives have been ruined or impacted and families have been struggling to help their loved ones get on the road to recovery. And so we've done a lot of work in terms of treatment. We've done a lot of work in terms of prevention. We've done a lot of work in terms of enforcement. What we haven't done, what I'm trying to do, is bring about corporate accountability to the pharmaceutical companies who started this crisis in the first place. This started as a prescription drug crisis, not a heroin problem. It, it morphed into a heroin crisis. And we have to look at the unfair and deceptive acts that these companies allegedly engaged in. And I want to bring those cases into a Vermont courtroom. That's why I've sued not only three corporations, including Purdue Pharma, right. Uh, which, of course, is the manufacturer of Oxycontin, yes. but eight members of the Sackler family who, in my opinion, run Purdue Pharma. And so we're trying to bring about that, tor that sort of accountability in the state of Vermont to stand, up to stand up for folks in this state who have struggled with addiction, who are struggling to get sober, to get on the road to recovery by standing up to the Sacklers and standing up to the Purdue Pharma and bringing about corporate accountability. So we're watching what's happening. Uh, in Oklahoma and other states. I think it really will be a bellwether, if you will, yeah. uh, to see where uh, other cases go. I know many other states have filed lawsuits, so um, right now we're, we're in, in the uh, process of uh, watching and waiting and seeing what happens out there. Indeed, particularly since, yeah, the, the, the opioid crisis, of course, isn't just a matter of demand. It's a, there's a supply issue, too, and that's what you're trying to address through these measures. Absolutely. All right. Now, one other thing that Mr. Yeah. Donovan would like to bring up with you, that being uh, a different sort of uh, drug-related uh, matter, this being uh, marijuana legalization in Vermont, since we're closing in on, on one year 
uh, now of small quantities for uh, recreational uh, possession uh, being legal. Uh, now, what have you learned, uh, if anything, uh, about uh, maybe this issue, given the quantities have been uh, legalized for the time that they have? And in uh, terms of implementation or uh, uh, adjudication of this, what's been most challenging uh, about it for you in the 11 plus months so far? The most challenging part of it has been the inaction by the Vermont legislature and Governor Scott to pass a regulated market. You can't tell Vermonters that you can legally possess marijuana and then be absolutely silent on how you obtain it. Right. You need to pass regulations that protect the public. We need to protect kids and we need to be transparent about how this market is going to be emerging. Here's a news flash. People sell marijuana. We've said it's legal to possess it. Right. Now we have to build the regulations in place to regulate the sale of it, to protect kids, to make sure uh, that there aren't dangerous chemicals in, involved in it. These, is why, these are why you have consumer protection regulations, to protect the public health and the public safety. This should be no different. The fact that we've gone down this road, dipped our toe in, uh, we, gotta go, we gotta go all the way now. There, yeah. There's no turning back. You can't legalize part of it and remain silent. You gotta act. Yeah, there certainly are some mm. efforts in the legislature, actually uh, quite active efforts that have took place uh, during this year's legislative session to get something like this done, but obviously uh, some disagreements on some of the particulars leading to uh, not anything quite being enacted just yet. Right, and, and I think what you're gonna see is, uh, again, uh, the market's not going away, yeah. and so you will have uh, people selling marijuana. And I, I think this is going to raise the question of, will there be prosecutions? Which raises real public policy questions about saying the state has said yes to possession, right. but how do you allow people to obtain it when you've legalized possession, but are silent on how one would obtain it? Let's be honest and direct with Vermonters. Let's treat people like adults. Let's build a system that works for everybody by passing sensible regulations for retail sales in Vermont. Yeah, especially since at all levels, the federal level yep. still says no. Yep. All right, TJ, thank you very much for sitting in with us this week. And we'll be back with more of What Matters This Week for you in just a moment.